This week, we're still in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, so close to the ocean, yet so far away. We're docked at the Jess Catamaran's boatyard, where after cutting holes in the boat, the Jess Catamaran's team carefully removed our old engines, which had about 10,000 hours on each, many of you have asked. And they got everything wired in for the two new Yanmar 110 horsepower engines. However, once they dropped the new ones in, they realized there were some sizing issues and they just didn't fit quite right in the same place the old ones sat. So they pulled them back out to make some modifications to the stringers, which brings us to today, Monday, April 8th, 2024, starting week three of our brand new engine installation. Let's go back in to get going. What's, you gonna finish today or? Maybe, we finished cutting the stringers down. He only got one half of a stringer cut on Friday afternoon, so we gotta cut the other half of that stringer yeah. so it's real thick and then do the same over here and then they got to put glass back over the top of them so they'll be strong and then mount the plates and put the engine in so how many extra days is all this <laughs> three or four days no no see your camera okay you can see that they cut the stringers out you can see the bottom of the boat through those stringer holes and they cut that out And that's the work they've had to do. What you just saw down there is these are the these are we're on top of the these were the top of the stringers that you, I just filmed down there. And they cut these off because the engine, the Volvo engine, set farther down, and the Yanmar engine on its mount sits farther up. So they needed that much space. Then they had to cut these out, and we thought when they cut them out. These are the metal backing plates that hold the, the stuff into the fiberglass. And so now they got to refiberglass, put more backing plates down there, and refiberglass everything back up. A big job. Yeah. A big job. <laughs> so, there you go. Wow. So, how far along is he on that one? They're ready to start fiberglassing again. Will that get done today? It should. And then he'll, he's got two days to don't work on the other one? Yeah. Okay. There okay, you go. there you go. What do you got today? I got Lumatech engine room lights. Let's check out these bad boys. Oh, oh, oh. That's neat. Oh, 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 it's like Christmas inside. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. While those engine rooms are clean, I want to get everything done. Lights, cameras, action. That's right. Okay. How do you like cleaning at that new sink? How do you like some dishes? Does it make the I job feel like better? A better woman. <laughs> I'll have to film you doing some dishes. That's good stuff right there. It comes with everything I need. Where's my little snippers? These are the best things to have on a boat, these little knife pick snips. I got four more of them coming because they need to be in every tool bag. They <laughs> so work. you always use them. I use them for everything. And then everything. you don't put them somewhere where you don't know where they're at. They're like my reading glasses. If I had them on a necklace, I think that would be all right because <laughs> on a boat, they are the perfect thing. I'm telling you, you need a tool belt so you can just walk around all day with all the tools you need around the belt. I'm so fat, I can't get in the holes as it is with tool belt. Just grab them and uh, hook up. You just dad bod. It's just dad bod. Look at those. Let's look going up. You want me to help you? Because I could. Or I could just stand here and watch you. I got two to put here and I got two to put in there. Yeah. Got ice engine right up. And then I could put one here. We'll crew it in on his side. I don't know if that belt crawled hold. Let me know when you figure it out, and I'll come back. We're waiting for the... the eclipse. Oh, you can see it. You can see the moon going in front of the sun. Oh yeah, you can see it. Oh, that's so or is cool. that a cloud? Oh, I can't see anything. Or is that a cloud? No, 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 it was definitely I, the moon. I can I see, can't it. see it. <laughs> I can't see it anymore. I'm blinded. Don't look at it. <laughs> yeah, the total eclipse will happen in a couple minutes. That's cool. Oh, I'm blinded now.
Everybody's it's still... Like, so much of the population is looking at the sky right now. I know. Everybody's just looking That's cool. Out. Yeah, what's up? What did you say? You mounted one? Yeah, I mounted two. Put this lot on. Yeah. This is fireproof insulation. These get a little warm, but I don't think they get oh. warm enough to burn that. But if it's fireproof, it shouldn't. It shouldn't burn, burn, right? It shouldn't burn. On the moon, whenever you go to a different spot, that's why there's a time difference. You know what time difference is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not gonna explain this on camera because I don't know as much about it as they would think I do. So that's all we're getting. It's mm -hmm. a little sliver. A little sliver. And it's over. You finished? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, that's so bright. Awesome. Wait, you see the engine now. Yeah. A buddy of mine got me hooked up with this company called Multi Hole Nets. And if you see our trampolines here, they're not very comfortable to lay on. They're really hard on the skin, they're really hard on the body to lay on, so nobody ever really gets on them. So Multi Hole Nets makes these great nets, great trampolines. And they're gonna install these today. Multi-hole nets by Sunrise Yacht Products replaced our crappy old nets. So now we have safe, durable, and comfortable trampolines. Not to mention they just look really good. You can find them at multiholenets.com. These brand new trampolines are so comfortable. You can lay down on them. They don't hurt you. They don't try to cut you up. They used to have an email to go all the way around, which is the way to go. What can I say? We only put the best on Zatara, and I think this is the best. And we got Luke with us. Why are you here, Luke Bosworth? Um, I was here to go sailing, but I don't think that's gonna happen now. <laughs> so now I'm just here living with them. Not for another week or two, unfortunately. And it's the girlfriend. We all know who the she girlfriend. is. All right, still working on fixing everything. But now they're on the uh, starboard. Wait, that's the port side. Port side. Starboard side is almost done, I think. And I love the exhaust fans they use. <laughs> Quite an interesting exhaust fan or whatever that is. Uh, this one looks like a guy's. Looks like a guy's leaning over down in the hole. What are y'all working on? All right, guys, today we're installing the Barnacle monitoring system. Yep. You guys remember I was installing at the ranch in Montana cameras, and I wanted to be able to look at my cameras no matter where I'm at in the world, and I want to look at my systems on the boat no matter where I'm at in the world. One of the great things that Barnacle's going to do on the boat, especially with these new engines going in, is it's going to monitor the break-in period and the warranty stuff, and it's all going to be videoed. It, it takes care of video, takes care of surveillance, takes care of alarms, emails, everything coming to me about anything that's happening. I can turn stuff on. If I've got smart switching, I can do all the kinds of things. With Barnacle, you can record and replay live video from your cameras, track your journey and save points of interest, see changes in real time and learn from trends, and see data for speed, navigation, batteries, bilges, and more. See all your onboard data at any time on any device. I'm just super thrilled to be on the boat. It's amazing to see you all in real life too, yeah. of course, after following you guys for years. But uh, yeah, I'm just so excited that you're getting the new engines and it's so important to you knowing that uh, are the pressures, uh, the temperatures, all the different parameters of that engine, are they actually behaving the way that they're supposed to? This way you can have the confidence that you're recording data directly from the engine and saying, yes, Yanmar, we love it, everything's all good, or hey, here's something that's going on. The yeah. Yanmar tech will know exactly where to look as opposed to kind of guessing or yeah. being on the phone. So yeah, we just love providing data. Barnacle, the onboard surveillance hub that lets you see it all. Make sure to use the discount code Zatara for 10% off. The link is in the description below. So this thing sends me all kinds of alerts. So like if the bilge, like this is the bilge port forward that's over in this hole over here. It's been, I can set the parameters, but it, uh, so I've got it set that if it, if it goes off more than 36 times in 24 hours, it'll send me an alert. And I can do it have, for, if it goes off for more than 30 seconds, if it goes off for yeah. five seconds. It'll send me an alert and an email saying, hey, that bilge has gone on for five seconds or 30 seconds. Or 
you know, it, so it's got a, it's, it's got all kinds of parameters you can set that'll send you signals and then and, and, and send you emails and send you alarms. And I, that's really cool. That's really cool for people who like it when we leave the boat for. You leave the boat and like if we've got it hooked up to shore power and shore power goes off. Yeah. It sends me an alert. Your shore power just when I hooked it up to the thing and shore yeah. power goes off, it, it tells me. That's nice. It's that's really cool. Super I kind of nice. like it. I actually like it. I do like it. So as you know, when we get to civilization, we end up shopping and getting all the parts and pieces we need for the next few months, year, I don't know. And so I have really taken advantage of Amazon for provisioning. We've been ordering all kinds of stuff, canned goods and dry goods, because number one, a lot of it's cheaper. And number two, they deliver it right here to the marina, so we don't have to haul it. Um, we did rent a car, but still, it's easier for Amazon to deliver it right to our boat basically so me and Kate are gonna go pick up some packages and uh, they're still working on the engines hopefully just another week or so and we will be out of here we'll be leaving for the Bahamas so we won't be in a place where I can get certain brands and products that we love and for certain recipes until probably Puerto Rico and uh, even then I don't think we're gonna want to rent a car but who knows what's going on the next the next few weeks are basically up in the air for us Miss Kate, are you tired of sitting here at the marina? Very much so. But I'm you get, excited to leave. Yeah, but you're getting your scuba stuff done. That's awesome. Yep, that's good. That's good. Tomorrow we go to the open water, so, uh, the open water scuba diving. So. What are you getting tomorrow? I thought you already got your open water. I mean, uh, open water advanced. Advanced. You go, yeah. girl. Right, awesome. Here we go again. Oh, wait, I can put some of those on top of here. Just got packages. More provisioning. More things that we need. I got a bunch of new shelves for the uh, under counter storage in the kitchen and and in uh, closets. And I got new rugs for the boat because the old ones are nasty and dirty and wouldn't fit in the laundry machine. So all kinds of fun stuff. Fun for me. And Keith has all kinds of fun stuff for him. So we are basically just consuming. We end up spending lots of money when we get back to the States. We need to leave quickly. With our new cameras installed, you can see I'm refabbing the metal backing plates and they're basically moving everything down about two and a half inches lower. Once he's got the backing plates in there, they'll fiberglass over that, place the engine plate on top, and then we'll be able to drop the engines right in there. Right. What's the status, babe? Right, so you can see the silver plate down there, aluminum plate. Yeah. That's that's what the engine sets on. And over on the left-hand side where that fan is, you can see where they've cut it down. Our right-hand side? Yeah, your right-hand side <laughs> yeah. on that. The right-hand side, they've cut it down, they put new metal in there, and then they'll that'll all get refiberglassed in, and then they'll put the plates on top of that, yeah. and it'll be finished. Cool. But again, today's Friday, yeah. and we have the weekend once again where nothing gets done. So, more days at the marina. Yippee! Here, move it. Like it. These are going to be too long. He's not going to like that. Me and Kate and Luke are getting our advanced open water dive certificate. And basically all that means is it's the next step in becoming a rescue diver and a master diver. Cool. Which is excellent. So That's we awesome. have, we've got two dives this morning and we'll have two tonight. So four dives today. And this is not required. Y'all are just doing this because you can. want to? Or, yeah. yeah. You might sir. might use it in Tonga. Exactly. You think y'all uh, do some diving in Tonga? Oh yeah. I don't know where the are. I don't know. All sorts of stuff's going on. Kate's getting ready to go diving. Kate, I ain't got the right sense. Well, I'll have to use you sure you this. can't find any? Are there any in the, the captain's seat? I'll check the captain's seat. See what's going on here. This is a little scary. Not gonna lie. The house is quite a disaster. Keith is working on stuff. I mean, you can bring your long ones. I'm sure he'll 
He'll want you to wear at least something. Yeah, I will. Finn, why aren't you diving with him? I just don't want to. I don't want to. He don't want to. And I couldn't if I wanted to because they're already on their, uh, like, extreme yeah. course of diving. I don't even have my diver's license. So. Your diver's license. But you have your driver's license. I have my driver's permit. Oh yeah, yeah, permit. I got my driver's permit too. I don't have much in life, and you know, <laughs> I, I, I just try to keep going. You have a van. Yeah, I have a van, dude. Really? Yeah. I just yesterday got a vacuum cleaner. Oh. Only in my own name. Yeah. Yeah, we got the title in yesterday. Yay. Exactly. It's in your name. It is your van. But you can't drive it yet, because you don't have no ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> wow. So that. Oh, it went away. Why did it go away? It went away. Oh, it flipped. Which one's oh, I guess it's rotating between cameras. That's the front engine camera. Uh, and there's the cockpit. Is it just rotating through all the cameras? That's kind of cool. Hey, Luke. You stay in there. You see that black wire coming out of Jack's room? It's on the wall. There's Finn. It's Finn. But I'm over there. But he's over there. Oh. There's what? Finn. What? Thank you, Brandon, with Barnacle for linking that whole system. I know. Up. That was cool. Yeah, now, awesome. the guy at Barnacle helped set it up to the B&G stuff. I got you the towel, by the way. Another thing I did while we're here getting organized and getting settled is I found this app. Keith was complaining he couldn't find anything. So I thought, if I'm getting all these groceries and provisions, I want to know where they're at. I don't know which locker they're in. Where are the chips? Where's this? How many jars of spaghetti sauce do I have? So I found apps, just a random app. I think it costs a dollar. And I've inventoried everything. So like, if I wanna know how many boxes of spaghetti noodles I have, I just go to my little app and I've, I've organized everything by location. So let's see here, location. So I've got all these locations. Can you see that? Let's see if you can see that. Oh, that didn't good. Hmm. Okay, so I got all these locations, floor lockers, condiment locker, and I know where they're all at. If I want to know how many jars of spaghetti sauce I have, I just go to a search. I type in spaghetti. Okay, and for spaghetti, I've got a variety of noodles. I've got spaghetti sauce. I've got six spaghetti sauces, and it tells me where it's at. Is that in focus? I don't think it is. There you go. So I got spaghetti sauce. I've got spaghetti noodles, and I know exactly where they're at. And uh, anyway, that is what I've been spending hours on this week. Hours and hours. So when I go to the grocery store, and I have it with me. I can say, "Oh, you know what? I need some more mayonnaise or whatever." Let's see, do we even have mayonnaise? Mayo. Yes, we have four mayonnaises in the middle chair food storage, and we have two sriracha mayos also in the middle chair food storage. I'm a little anal. Mm -hmm. Organization is my thing. Mm -hmm. Alright, so this one. What have they done here? All the fiberglass is the done. The fiberglass is done. Nice. So they lowered those stringers about up two and a half inches. Yeah. And uh, you can see the mounting plate for the engine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they'll paint all that, let all that dry, sand oh, all that, right. get it all nice and neat. Plate. And then they'll uh, they'll put in uh, the mounting plates. So Monday they should paint this, and okay. and uh, I mean, just Tuesday, gotta... Tuesday we'd be putting an engine in here. Tuesday they're putting it in. Yeah. You think? Yeah. They'll they'll finish this Monday paint. Yeah. And then Tuesday they're putting an engine in. I'll go ahead and wire it. Hey, yeah. Why don't you do that? Of course, today's Saturday, so no work is done today on Saturday. Uh, but uh, Keith is going to wire in some more Lumatech lights, I guess. We're waiting on our dinghy. That was supposed to be in yesterday. They're putting the decals on the dinghy. And then, um, again, it's the weekend, so I guess we'll get that on Monday. So this is the closest to real time that I have ever been on my videos. So what you're seeing right now happened just about a week before four or five days before. I try to always have several videos in the can just in case I don't have something to film 
or we're like on passage and don't have internet, which doesn't happen anymore. But lately I've had the same content that Jack and Finn have had. And so a lot of you are like, ah, I've already seen that on Jack's channel. So I'm trying to stay as close to real time as I can so that I get the first good stuff, the good content, and maybe we won't duplicate stuff. Um, we try not to share content, but sometimes we do because we're living the same life. We're having the exact same adventures. So. One light. That's not wired in though, is it? Does it look wired in? I don't know, I'm looking at the camera, I can't even in. see. All I can see is the screen and it's so tiny. Does it look wired in? I mean, come on guys, do you see what I gotta live with? I'm gonna slap you. I mean, this is what I live I'm with. I'm gonna shut this door and leave you down here. And I'm down here getting all fiberglassed up. And she's up there. Yeah, it's awesome lights. It's awesome lights. I'll make you sleep down in here. I want to talk to you all a little bit about today about how we raise our family. And this all stems from, this all stems from um, a short reel that Renee posted on uh, Instagram a couple of days ago. And we got a we got great positive feedback, and we got a lot of negative feedback. And uh, I don't really care. I like negative and positive feedback. But a lot of people out there were put off because Jack smooched, gave two little kisses to Kenzie, and that's it. Two little innocent kisses, and we are all around. And and something I wanted to talk about, and what I want to say is, we've raised our kids intentionally to be themselves in front of us, around us. There's no shame. There's no restrictions. I mean, there are some modesty issues. I mean, obviously, we, we teach modesty. Obviously, we talk of, about certain things. We talk about everything. There's nothing off limits. But kissing the person you love or kissing the person you're with, just like me kissing, we've modeled that. I kiss their mother in front of them. I expect them to kiss their wives in front of me and their wives to kiss them. And for all you sticks in the mud out there that are rigid and you can't even experience passion and you can't experience things and it's only in certain a certain box that you've boxed it all down to, I'm sorry for you because that's not who we are. I've I've taught me and Renee have taught our children to live out out loud and on purpose. We have modeled our marriage like that. We show our children what love and passion is about. Oh, they don't know about our sex life, but do we joke about our sex life all the time? Do they do we tell them about the details of our sex life? No, but we joke about sex and our sex life all the time. And I want my children to not be shameful or put themselves in a box just because everybody else out there puts themselves in a box. My kids don't need to be in a box and I'm not going to live in a box either. That's the very reason we left polite society because it's restrictive. It's, it's horrible. I don't like it. It, 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 there's nothing good about it. So, and you guys all asked, well, maybe they didn't want themselves being filmed on YouTube. No, they approved that. I asked them. Yeah. They, I asked them. Uh, we asked them. We would 100%. never, yeah, we would never put anything on YouTube that, that our children didn't agree to. And once again, they're 21 year old grown ups. Yeah, they're adults. <laughs> they're adults. You know, they gave us permission to do that. And there's two little kisses. Two little yeah. kisses. They weren't making out. There was no tongue fluid swap going on there. A lot of the young adults were freaking out saying, I would never do that in front of my parents. How can they do that in front of their parents? And that just is, distinguishes the kind of relationship we have with yeah. our children versus what you have with your parents. Yeah, they're not ashamed. There's no shame. There's no, there's no inhibitions there of, I have to keep things from my mom and dad. Yeah. I'm excited to be witness to their their blossoming relationship. Like I said on Instagram, it's it's fun to be a part of your kids' relationships. We've had. I would prefer it this way than than them, you know, doing that away from us. Yeah, and here's another thing. You know, we've had lots of kids on our boat over the last year and a half, and the one thing we know for sure is that what most of the kids' parents models for them, they didn't like. They wanted, when they saw how we lived and they saw how me and Renee interacted and how our children reacted, that was confirm. I didn't need confirmation, but it is confirmation that me and Renee did it right. We did a lot of things wrong, but in that area of being open, no shame, and once again, boundaries on things. I mean, you know, you don't need to be having sex in front of people and you don't need to be dishonoring a woman or dishonoring a man in front of people. But, but I realized these kids that came out of it, they liked the freedom they liked that unrestrictive 
boundary that is put on put on us by society, whatever society, whether it's Christian society, Muslim society, liberal society, it doesn't matter, whatever boundaries you're being put in, get out of it, escape. Don't have to live like that, please. Anyway, back to work. <laughs> A lot of people said it's porn, and they're like, oh, oh my gosh, gosh, are you OnlyFans? And I'm thinking, wow, you we must need to not get, have ever we need to get seen paid. somebody kissing? I mean, do they not ever see people kissing? Quit going to movies. I don't, don't, yeah, go to movie. I don't get it at all. Yeah. Don't go to a movie. Ben's editing a video. Yep. Oh my God. And, oh, look. Dad's in the engine room, starboard engine room, putting those lights in. Very cool. Okay, right, more packages to pick up. In regards to what Keith was talking about earlier, about Jack and Mackenzie and their kiss, their Instagram video, you have to go over there to see it. We are a very physical family. We're a very affectionate family. We hug, we kiss. Uh, you know, all of it appropriate, of course, but a lot of people are uncomfortable with PDA, public displays of affection, and, and I get that. And I know that's where a lot of the comments were coming from, um, but, you know, that's just who we are. We want our kids to be physical, we want them to hug us, and to not be ashamed, like Keith said, to be comfortable being around one another and expressing love in a physical way, to an extent. Obviously, like we said, there's boundaries, but yeah, so that's just, that's my two cents. I agree with everything that Keith said. So, airplane. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so I've got a couple boxes to carry, but I wanted to go ahead and close this video out. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully next Thursday, we'll be putting engines in. I know I said that last week, but really, surely it's going to happen next week. Uh, anyway, have a good weekend. Subscribe if you don't already, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I have two big boxes to carry. But now the wind is blowing, and I wanted to close the video out, but you're not going to hear me. What about it? It comes in this box right here. Yeah, it's right here, this thing. What's that box made out of? So for all you greenies <laughs> out there, do you like recycled plastic? Well, he made this out of the plastic we've been throwing in the ocean. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> right. He went out there. Jason and Nikki went. We're right behind us, scraping up the plastic. And they sent it to, to Brandon, and Brandon refabbed it all into this nice, uh, environmentally friendly, uh, remanufactured plastic box. Wow, that's amazing. That's the whole reason I bought it. Exactly. Yeah.